What's up everybody, welcome back to Tight End Loose Off. Today we're gonna talk about the right way to reconfigure Atlanta Motor Speedway. And we're also gonna touch a little bit on that pesky splitter and its terrible relationship with our beloved infield grass. So let's talk about it. First off, thank you so much for your patience. Things have been very busy in my world and I have other priorities I have to take care of first before I take care of YouTube. So I got a couple really cool videos coming up. I'm going to GoPro Motorplex very, very soon. I'm gonna be doing a video about that. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And I'm gonna be doing a tour of my sim rig, uh, which is in kind of a unique place at the moment. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy that as well. But let's get to today's topics. It's getting really annoying watching race cars get torn up because they make some contact with the grass. This is one of those things I think has a pretty easy solution and I think we need to look into doing this sooner rather than later. Unfortunately, it looks like NASCAR is doubling down on the splitter. They've committed to it in a big way with the next gen car with the step splitter. The splitter is just not gonna go away anytime soon. I don't understand why NASCAR after pretty much everyone complains about it on a weekly basis is insisting on keeping the splitter, but it looks like they're keeping it and that's all there is to it. So I think we have to make do. So if NASCAR isn't going to make a change, I think it's in the racetrack's hands at this point. The easiest solution that I've seen is installing AstroTurf. We already have AstroTurf at Charlotte Motor Speedway and it works beautifully. And especially with Charlotte and Atlanta and Texas, there's no apron really. Pretty much it's racing surface and then grass. So it's really easy to clip it. I don't understand what the holdup is with it, but I think we can start seeing this at more racetracks soon. I think people are starting to get a little bit more privy to the idea of installing AstroTurf at a lot of the racetracks. You think about it, a lot of road courses, a lot of road courses have asphalt runoffs and things like that for similar reasons, for safety too, but also a lot of road racing cars also have splitters on them. So you don't wanna see race cars get torn up because they make contact with the grass or run off the racing surface. I just wanted to create a little bit of awareness for it because it's really starting to bug me and I wanted to say something about it. But next, let's talk about Atlanta Motor Speedway. Atlanta Motor Speedway could be getting reconfigured as soon as later this year after its second race date. And the thinking behind that is to have the new surface coincide with the introduction of the next gen car. And I think this is a load of baloney. First off, Atlanta has a fantastic surface. The more worn out a racetrack is, the earlier in a race drivers start searching around the racetrack for grip. One of my favorite shots I've ever gotten filming a NASCAR race was in turn one at Atlanta. I was looking down the racetrack and you could see drivers just whizzing by in all the different lanes. It's a really cool thing and you don't see it at a lot of racetracks. And you know what? It was really early in the race when I got that shot but it really doesn't make sense to me to make the new surface coincide with the next gen car. The old worn out surface is much more likely to produce a good race than a brand new fresh repave. Fresh repaves often take several years to develop any sort of character. And you think about like the roads we drive on, you want them to last a really long time, but that's not what you want in a racetrack. Like we said earlier, the more worn out a racetrack is, the earlier in a race drivers start searching around the racetrack for grip. And that is even more especially important at mile and a half racetracks. The other thing that sucks about them doing it this year, as opposed to waiting a little bit, is that we're less likely to see any sort of reconfiguration. If you don't know, Atlanta used to look a lot like Homestead does now. It used to not have a tri-oval. Overall, I think that configuration just produces a better race. The reason we went to these tri-oval, quad-oval designs is because racetracks were trying to jack their speeds up a little bit for marketing purposes. It really resonated with fans really well. If you could say your racetrack was the fastest on the NASCAR schedule, people generally got pretty excited about that. Didn't even matter really if you were putting on good racing or not, just need to be fast. So here's what I think Atlanta Motor Speedway needs to do. They need to use the same asphalt recipe that they used in 1997 on this repave. That way the surface wears out exactly the same. And then they also need to revert the racetrack to the pre-1997 configuration. One of the best races in NASCAR history was raced on that configuration and there's no reason they should have ever changed it to begin with. I think the old configuration with the current type of asphalt would produce really good racing. I also think getting rid of the giant inflatable beer cans was a huge mistake. We need to get those things back at the racetrack as soon as possible. 
But let me know what you guys think in the comments. I wanna hear what you guys have to say. Also, if you haven't already, like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon so you know when I upload new videos, and you can find me on Twitter or Instagram. Links for those are in the description below. But until next time, my name's Tyler, this is Tied and Loose Off, and I'll see you later.